Okay, so I was going to do this live, but uh, my my internet connection has been utterly and completely whack as fuck lately. So uh, I'm just gonna do it this way so that the message gets out. But yes, this is just more uh, knowledge of the past and. Um, not to be caught up in the past, um, but, but to realize, um, the layers in between, uh, the stories that have been told, the lies. And so now we are at a point where we have to make, um, our true past present. It's all about collapsing everything in the now moment. It's not about past or future. It's about, uh, the truth inside of you here and now. So this is why I share some of this stuff, so that it sparks within you in the here and now uh, a resonance. This is for resonance and remembrance. People of the Vedian civilization only fed on the diverse plant foods from their own plot and what their domestic animals brought them, brought to them. This approach was not stipulated by any superstition or law. It was the result of great knowledge. There is more than one way to know. And there are different degrees of knowing. One can not only know, but also sense with oneself, one's flesh and soul, many phenomena, the purposes of the divine creations, in his system, his meaning, the all that is in this context of God, the personification. But, I mean, um, you know, if, if you, uh, Want to see it as creator and created like uh it's, it is a masculine uh you know uh the big bang uh, the, the word of god is an outpush uh um a manifestation and you can see that as you know um a male aspect or with the push and the pull but it's not just that. We're, we're not talking like <laughs> female and male here. Whenever you talk about that, it's it's all encompassing. It's it's about what was the thing that created the vibration to begin with. What what where did that stem from? Each Vedian knew in this way that what he used for food not only nourished the flesh, but also filled the soul with consciousness and brought him personally information from all the universal worlds, all the universe's worlds. This is why the energy inside them and the sharpness of mind and the speed of thought in those people exceeded that of modern people many times over. The animal world and the plants living in the human family's dimension reacted to man as to a god. You know, a lot of people um, I've been noticing lately have been saying that, you know, it's, it's like um, whenever they're immersed in nature and they're and listening really listening and attuning they're like it's it's almost as if um you know nature is doing this for me it feels like the animal world and the plants living in the human family's dimension react you know, i just said that the animals herbs and trees all thirsted for a kind glance or a good-natured touch from man. 
and in this context, man means human and woman. This power of sensory energy did not allow weeds to grow in the garden or orchard. Many people today also know that a domestic flower can suddenly wither if it is not to the liking of someone in the family. On the other hand, it can flourish if it feels love and communication. This is why Vedian people never touch their garden with a hoe. There is an expression even today, evil eye or put the evil eye on, it comes from these times. Those people were able to create a great deal with the energy of their senses. Imagine a person walking across the ground of this plot. Everything around tries to catch his good glance. Here he looked at a weed. Why are you here? The man thought. The weed soon the weed soon would wither from sorrow. On the contrary, if someone smiled at a cherry tree, that would make its sap run through its veins with doubled energy. If a person had to go on a long journey, he did not encumber himself with something to eat. He could find plenty of food for himself on his way. When he stopped in a settlement and gazed upon its beautiful homesteads, he could ask for something to eat or drink. It was considered an honor to offer a traveler beverages, fruits, and delicious roots. And I'll also repeat what I say is that, you know, um, learn what these weeds are, the, the, the purpose of the growth, and um, why there may be an overgrowth of something, and also as within, so without. Um, most people have overgrowth of something that, uh, because the, the consciousness isn't there yet, uh, the awareness of what's going on inside of them. So things are growing, um, sporadically and erratically, but once you start to uh, be the constant gardener, uh, not just of the things happening inside your body, but you know where it stems from, the thoughts and the mind, constant gardener of the mind, then you will start to uh, really pay acute attention and awareness of why things are, where they are, how they got there, and if you don't want them there, and pluck them out. So yeah, I just wanted to share that.